All right, good evening, Morning Star. How in the world are you? It's good to see you this evening. I pray that you have had a wonderful and a prosperous week so far. Uh, certainly it's a little bit different than it was on last Wednesday. Uh, so we thank God that he has uh, moved the, the ice away and gotten the temperatures a little bit more tolerable for us Mississippians. So we're glad to be in the house once again. We're going to start off with a word of prayer uh, and then we're going to uh, speak to one another. Then we're going to go through our lesson for tonight. Uh, let us go ahead and have a word of prayer. Let us bow. Eternal and everlasting Father, here we are again, a few of your humble servants. We acknowledge you, God, as the great King, the great I Am, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. We reverence you, O God, as a great sustainer of this universe and all universes. We come with a spirit of confession, God. We ask right now that you would forgive us for each and every sin. We plead the mighty blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive us now, God. And then, God, we ask that you would forgive those who have sinned against us. God, you proclaim in your word that we should bless those who curse us. Help us with that, God, in our time of weakness. Father, in all of these things that we've experienced, death, pain, setbacks, uh, sickness, this global pandemic, oh God, even through all of that, God, you have still been awfully good to us. So we say thank you right now, Master. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for loved ones. Thank you for friends. Thank you for family. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for our opportunities in life. Now, God, we pray that you would be with us throughout this uh, Bible study, oh God, uh, as we continue to study these impactful women uh, in Jesus Christ's ministry. And then, God, we ask that you would just put a, a, a loving hand on the Thurman family, oh God. Touch them right now in their time of need as we've lost Geraldine, oh God. I pray that you would comfort them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. This is our prayer. We pray it with a spirit of expectancy. Let us all say amen. 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 All right. Uh, if you would, guys, go ahead and unmute yourselves and speak to your brothers and your sisters and your pastor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. I think we are good to go. Good to see all of you all tonight. Uh, quite, a, quite a bit different weather than it was this time last week. Kind of uncharacteristically down in the teens on last week. So... Uh, we thank God for him bringing us out of that. Now, there is something important to remember that uh, not all of us are all the way out of it yet. So let us pray for our neighbors, uh, our brothers and sisters who are still dealing with water issues, uh, who are still dealing with uh, power issues. Uh, I pr we pray that they would uh, be comforted in their time of need. Also lift up uh, Leroy Thurman and uh, Jesse Thurman, that family, uh, Irene Thurman and that family, uh, as they have lost uh, their matriarch, Geraldine Thurman, and our member. Uh, we pray for that family that God will comfort them in their time of need. We know that God does not make any mistakes, uh, but yet we still need to pray that they would be comforted. Uh, also remember, as you are talking to your fellow, fellow uh, members and fellow friends, uh, make sure that you remind them that on this Sunday only, because somebody, some people don't really read all of their text messages, but for this Sunday only, we will begin worship at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. So whomever you may talk to throughout this week, uh, make sure that you will alert them that on this Sunday only, we will begin at 10 a.m., 
We're gonna start a little bit early because the uh, graveside service uh, for Geraldine will be at 12 o'clock. Uh, so again, 10 a.m. All right. Um, tonight, our last lesson in this unit three. Uh, unit three topic is the call of women. And we've looked at uh, various different uh, topics and subtopics uh, about the women in the ministry of God and how important uh, they are. And we just highlighted them over the last few weeks. Uh, and I think that is vitally important to do so because sometimes women can get lost in the shuffle in terms of their importance uh, in the ministry of the gospel. Our topic for uh, this week, showing generous hospitality showing generous hospitality. One of the commentary that I read, the subtopic called to serve, which is very appropriate. A printed passage for tonight, Acts the 16th chapter, verses 11 through 15, and then verse 40. And after we look at Acts for a few moments, we're gonna go over to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Uh, verses 26 through 30. Uh, so we'll look at both of those passages and see uh, how showing generosity, uh, showing hospitality plays into uh, what God requires of us. Our key verse comes from Acts, the 16th chapter, verse number 15. And that key verse is, when she was baptized, meaning Lydia, our main person for today, and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. We're talking about Lydia and that key verse, how after she was baptized, uh, she really wanted to provide housing and a place to stay as Paul ministered in her area. All right, the lesson aims for tonight. Number one, we want to consider how Lydia used her gifts and her place in society to support Paul's ministry. And think about it while we're going through the, uh, this lesson tonight, and I hope you've thought about it over the series of lessons lessons even though we're emphasizing women's ministry and women's impact in the grand scheme of things uh us fellows really ought to take note on this as well this is not just for women uh but this is for disciples and people of god period so consider how she used her gifts and her place in society to support paul's ministry number two repent Repent of times you have looked down on others who have not had the same opportunities or advantages. Mm. Key. That's big right there. Do we repent enough? So let's repent of times we have looked down on others who have not had the same opportunities or advantages. And I don't want you to think about how you actively uh, look down on people, but I kind of want you to think about it in terms of how you may do it uh, subliminally, how you may do it subconsciously, uh, how we can treat people who maybe don't have our same status a little bit differently than we do others. And then number three, this is a huge one as well, serve others joyfully, key word being joyfully, through whatever means are at your disposal. Again, I don't want us to really just think about that on the surface, but I want us to go beneath the surface and think about in terms really what God's ministry is all about. Our ministry is to serve folks, not only to share the gospel with them, but understand that a part of the gospel uh, is serving folks and doing so joyfully not begrudgingly, not because you have to, not because you told yourself that we want to spend this amount of money per year helping folks, but you want to be able to do that joyfully, not only personally, 
but corporately as well. All right. Okay. So this lesson tonight, before we read the introduction, this lesson tonight uh, really is a great, great lesson. As we can see that Paul is going to be traveling uh, in ministry to a certain area that's near where Lydia lives. Uh, Lydia, we've heard about her our whole ministry lives. Uh, she's a woman who uh, has a good business going. She sells fine linens. Uh, and she's a woman who, after hearing the word of God and uh, she from Paul, him ministering, she gave her life fully, fully committed because she already was uh, knew about God. and She already uh, uh, worshiped God, but she had not quite been exposed to the gospel the way that Paul exposed her to the gospel. Well, when she got exposed to this gospel, this true gospel, uh, she decided that, hey, I've got a great place in, 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 in this area. I can allow Paul to live here as he's ministering to people in our area. I want to share all of my gifts with him. So that's pretty much what this lesson about. It really challenges our mind, not that you should grab everybody or grab the pastors and say, come live with me, but what this lesson is really trying to teach us is how to be generous, how to be hospitable, and to understand that we are all working together for a common goal. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to get down to the introduction tonight. Do we have a volunteer tonight who would like to read the introduction before we get into our lesson? Is there a volunteer on the line who would like to read the introduction? You may do so at this time. Any volunteers to read the introduction? I'll, I'll read it fast. Can you hear me? I can hear you, brother, loud and clear. Okay. You may or may not recall the story of a young down waitress who helped an elder man cut up his food. The waitress working at a Waffle House in Texas to earn money for college tuition. During her shift, an elderly man came and placed a breakfast order. The waitress later learned that he had been in, been in and out of the hospital for the past five weeks. The waitress delivered his order <laughs> and then proceeded with her normal routine. As usual, she asked the customer if he needed anything else, then continued to serve the tables of other restaurant guests. As she passed the man, she noticed his considerable struggle to cut up his food. Without a certain thought, she assisted him by cutting up his food for him. Even as the cook called her to pick up additional orders. As she cut up his food, the two engaged, the two exchanged stories regarding their life experiences. In the meantime, others were watching. People are always watching the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the observers snapped a picture of the account. The, pic the picture went viral and created much positive feedback. When the young waitress was questioned about her motives for assisting the elderly customer, the waitress said she was simply doing the right thing. In recognition of her deed, she received a $16,000 college, college scholarship and became a social media hero. Mm -hmm. We need more heroes who are willing to do the right thing, even if it feels like an inconvenience yeah. or, an, or an insignificant or lowly task in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. In God's hands, a lure is a lot, and ordinary becomes extraordinary when done in little. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, uh, Deacon Smith. Wonderful introduction. 
Uh, very, very well put together there. A couple of couple of things that really stand out to me in that introduction, and one of them is uh, kind of midway through, the, the writer says that people are always watching the good and the bad. And that's something that we have to think about in terms of uh, service and in terms of showing generosity and showing hospitality. That's really what this lesson is all about. And that's what we're going to see from Lydia in this lesson that you got to understand, folks, that people are always watching us. And that that shouldn't really be a bad thing for us as believers because we should be doing those things that God has called us to do. That's right. But I want to point something out to you. And this is a scripture. And it's a scripture that we're all familiar with. And that scripture is that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. why, do you, why do you bring up that scripture, Pastor? Because our flesh, we're good at sin. We were born in it. it. It comes natural to us. The reason why we're able to operate in, in the spirit of God is because we've accepted him. And if we allow him to reign and rule in our lives, then we're able to operate freely. As we just talked about last Sunday, are you really free? So what we have to think about, folks, is we have a propensity to sin. Where are you going, Pastor? That means we've got a propensity not to be hospitable. Mm -hmm. We have a propensity not to be generous. Mm -hmm. So what are you saying, Pastor? That means that we have to actively work on being those things because folks are looking at us all the time, whether good or bad. I challenge you today in the text message a little bit earlier that I challenge you to begin to ask yourselves how can we minister or what it will take to minister and list those things that are positive as opposed to saying things like, I don't think we can do it mm -hmm. or I don't think it's going to jail mm -hmm. or listing reasons as to why we can't. We are hospitable. We can be generous. We can do all those things that God has called us to do because uh, uh, several months ago we talked about this in a, in a Bible study or during worship service. Do you not know that when uh, uh, statistics are done and people do surveys when it comes to what they think about churches, people who don't go to church, y'all, a lot of them are saying they don't come because we're not nice. Mm. <laughs> mm. My God, are you serious right now? Mm. Now, yeah, I know that there may be some bias in there and I know some of us are thinking, oh, they just don't want to come to church. Yeah, that's true for some of them. But you can find surveys all the time where people who don't come to church, they don't come because of us. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? We don't ever want to be the reason that gets in the way of people coming to worship, people possibly coming to give their lives. And the way uh, that we should do that is not doing anything uh, uh, outside of ordinary, like Deacon Smith just read, because God can take our ordinary if we're willing and he can make it extraordinary. Mm -hmm. As we prepare to get into our lesson today, Paul is traveling to this area that Lydia, uh, her home is near here. And Paul just really actually prior to this lesson, if you go back and read uh, in, in Acts the 15th chapter, he really just had a, a breakup with his ministry partner, Barnabas. They had a little bit of a disagreement. Uh, and that's fine because what it did, God was in control. It's just creating the ministry going to a couple of different areas right. uh, as opposed to them going together. So uh, now Paul is traveling. He's got a new traveling party here. Uh, and, and he is coming into an area where Lydia is. And that's where we pick up today in Acts 16. Our very first subtopic, serving by the river for Christ. And the reason why it's called that because prior to Paul stumbling up on these ladies, they're in an area where there's no synagogue. Paul would 
typically when he came to an area, he would find the synagogue in that area. Synagogue meaning where uh, those Jewish believers who believed basically in the Old Testament would get together and meet. And Paul would try to go there because at least those Jewish believers had a little bit of foundation of uh, uh, who God is, even though they didn't quite believe the gospel just yet. Mm -hmm. But this particular area at Philippi, y'all, it didn't have a synagogue. So, again, giving props to the ladies. Oh, my ladies, what's up? Giving yeah. props to the ladies. They're down by the riverside having a prayer meeting because there is no church in the area. Mm -hmm. So this is where we find Paul encountering Lydia. Serving by the river for Christ. Therefore, loosing from Tros, we came with a straight course of Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, this is verse 12, which is the chief city, that part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. I want to stop right there, because really, even though you're thinking that's not saying much, Pastor, that's saying a whole lot. Because look at the willingness of the Apostle Paul to travel from place to place to go and spread the gospel to a people that he knows is going to have a confrontation with him. Mm -hmm. Even though he would come to an area, and as you can see here, he went from one area to the next, so he finally ar uh, arrived uh, in the Philippi area, even though they weren't going to listen, Paul came and he was going to preach the gospel regardless. Well, why do you say that, Pastor, that he traveled, for tra traveled place to place? He's walking. Sometimes he's on a horse. Sometimes it's mild. Sometimes it's dusty conditions. Sometimes it's windy. Sometimes all kind of stuff getting in his eye. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying that is we complain about showing up on Sunday morning. All right. But here Paul is with the willingness. All right. And some of us live right by the church. Come on. But Paul has this willingness to travel place to place to preach the gospel. Then verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside. Remember I said that there was no synagogue in that area. He would typically go to the church, but he couldn't find a church. So he went and joined these women in their prayer party by the riverside. Mm -hmm. Where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. I want to remind you that even though you may not be at church. Mm-hmm. Because guess what, folks? We got shut down by the coronavirus, but right. you still need to be by the riverside right. in your house yeah. praying to the Lord. Amen. If we Amen. only pray when we're physically in church, we have already lost awesome. the battle. Come on. Amen. We have to be willing to go by our spiritual heart. riverside. We yes. have to be willing to impart yes. uh, uh, Christian values in our children yes. at home. We have to be willing to do those things outside yes. of church. Because if we don't train folks up outside yes. of church, even ourselves, when we get to church, that's yes. when things fall apart. All right. Amen, somebody. Right. They were willing to sit down and pray and have prayer meeting even outside of church. And then that brings us to verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. This is Paul speaking. Whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Again, you got to remember now, Lydia already has a pretty good understanding of the old covenant. She has a pretty good understanding of the law of Moses. But remember, just because they had an understanding of the law of Moses does not mean that they had accepted the gospel. Because this would mean that they believe that Jesus Christ came, died for their sins, defeated death, and rose with all power in his hand. Can you imagine Paul trying to teach this to folks when they're already 
bogged down by the law of Moses. That's what's happening here. Hmm. But this lady received the gospel. She was a woman who had pretty good status in society. And I think that's important to mention that we need to be willing to utilize where we are in society, the connections that we have to further the kingdom of God. Listen, sometimes we can be a church person in the body of Christ, but we don't want to use any of our connections All right. to further the kingdom of God. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. I just want to sit right here on this pew. I don't want anybody to know anything about me. And I don't want to use any of my connections to further the kingdom of God. That is contrary to what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. When she was baptized and her household, she besought us. I think it's very important to understand that Lydia said, if you're going to stay in my house, you're going to believe in the Lord. All right. She besought us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. In other words, she basically begged them, Paul, to stay at her house while he was in that area preaching the word. That's interesting. Because sometimes when we come around to preach the gospel, we're not even welcome in our own churches. Amen. That's right. But this woman said, hey, you're in the area, you're preaching the gospel, you've saved my life with the gospel, I want to pour into you. I think I need to remind everybody that if the man of God is delivering the word of God and he's in your area, then you need to bless the man of God. All right. That's There's right. no secret about that. I'll yes. tell you that whether I'm your pastor, somebody else is your pastor, right. you yes. need to bless the man of God. That's right. And then so a period of time passed between verses 15 and and 40. Paul continued to preach the word of God. Paul continued to go up against those who didn't believe in the gospel, didn't believe in New Testament teachings. Remember, he ran into a jailer. He was jailed. Paul and Silas were jailed. They had a midnight jailbreak. The guard ended up giving his life to Christ. And that's where we arrive again at verse 40. And they went out of the prison. This is when they get broke free of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. So even as all of that has transpired, even after all the stones were thrown at Pastor Paul, even though Pastor Paul wasn't believed in, he wasn't supported in a lot of ways. People were trying to kill him. They imprisoned him. Uh, for healing a girl with a bad spirit, Lydia still supported the man of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, I want to encourage you that whatever you do, every night you go to bed, your prayer should be praying not only for your loved ones, but you should be praying for the man of God. Yes. As Lydia did here. So the question, the question in this first outline Keep in mind now that they were down by the riverside before Paul even showed up. These women were down by the riverside having Bible study. No pastors in the area, no leaders in the area. And that brings us to this question. When designated leaders are not available, how should lay people carry on? When designated leaders are not available, how should the congregation carry on? Anybody there? Anybody? I believe that. Uh-huh. Me? Yes, we can hear you.
scare all when you can't be there because, you know, we have a lot of things that happen mm-hmm. that cause us not to be where we're supposed to be. And I mean, it's just like even if you were on a, on a job, uh, it, it should be more than one person that knows how to do the job you're doing. And if, if I understand correctly, uh, the only thing that the deacons and some of the members can't do is it mayor and bear. Is mm-hmm. that right? You mm-hmm. have to be a licensed minister to do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, you can't just allow the church to lay dormant because the pastor could be sick. He could have a family emergency. Anything might happen. But uh, you got to put yourself in place to be an effective leader in the absence of the pastor. Now, if you're one of those people that wants to uh, sit up there and mislead the people uh, in the pastor's absence or the leader's absence, then you need to take a step back and allow somebody else that's going to do effective teaching uh, to the congregation while the pastor's not there. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that was on the question. Uh-huh. Good, 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 good. Yeah, uh, agree that the pastor and the deacons, who knows, maybe the church only has one deacon uh, and one pastor and both of them are out. Yeah, there should be a, a whole group of people who are in place that can carry uh, the prayer meeting on, that can read one or two scriptures and give a few words on it. Uh, that is the idea that all of us are trained up or discipled up uh, to be able to do those things. And yes, uh, misleading can happen, but a lot of times that misleading happens and you're not even aware that you're misleading. So the way that you remedy that is be willing to uh, accept training. Uh, that's a word that a lot of times that we kind of reject or we kind of push back against training. It kind of makes us feel like that he's trying to be the boss of me. So uh, accept that training, accept what God is trying to do in your life. Uh, and yes, the show must go on. Anybody else right there? When designated leaders are not available, how should lay people carry on? Lydia kept having prayer meeting. What else? Um, a saying that we have at work in one day. Hello, hour. can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, my phone kind of my phone kind of goes in and out, but okay. You, uh, you in right now? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get in there before Mother Brewer uh, got in there, but she uh, took some of the words right out of my mouth. Okay. But uh, you know, she was definitely correct about uh, about service going on, and you know, God forbid if you know anything did happen. And we was having service, and the pastor didn't show up. Mm-hmm. But you know, things do happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, if if it's time for service to store, mm-hmm. and said for some reason, God, like I said, God would be you can't make. Mm-hmm. Then it's up to us deacons to go ahead and, and carry on service. Uh-huh. Some people may not like it, mm-hmm. but it that's part of our job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like you said, service must go on. Yeah. So if something happened, uh, you could get sick. Mm-hmm. Accidents could happen. But like I said, God would be in things that, that, that happened. But service must go on. Mm-hmm. Just like Lydia. Uh-huh. Just like Lydia. Even though she didn't have a synagogue there. Mm-hmm. Still, they went down by that riverside and they still had service. That's right. That's the same way it went up. And I'm pretty sure Deacon Williams and Deacon McGill agree with me. Uh-huh. If you don't show up and we don't have a son in the house, mm-hmm. then one of us got to step up. That's one right. of us got to step up and carry the service on. That's right. That's right. And that's appropriate and that's what it should be. Uh, the service must go on because that could be the day, Deacon Smith. That could be the day that yourself or Deacon Wayne or Deacon Glenn uh, would say something that that person there who's thinking about giving their lives, they needed to hear it from one of you guys. 
instead of me. You never know how God works something out. So, yes, uh, there's a common saying that us preachers always have one in our pocket in case we go somewhere and somebody asks us. Uh, but the deacons should always have one in their pocket, uh, as well as the lay people should have a, a little something, something to say as well, because we are all disciples of Jesus Christ. Great comments. Anybody else right there? Uh, and on that subject, true believers is going to come to the prayer meeting regardless to who is carrying it on. Mm -hmm. Now we have a lot of these. I don't know what kind of believers you would call them, but if the pastor ain't there to do it, mm -hmm. they ain't they ain't coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true believers is gonna be there regardless of who is carrying the prayer meeting or the Bible class or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you got so many people that just believe if the pastor ain't there, mm -hmm. it, it ain't gonna go. That's right, right. right. Mm -hmm. So Deacon uh, Harvey Williams said that some 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 uh, members. If the pastor's not going to be there, they're not coming. Mm. <laughs> and that's not the way to be. We should still support the church ministry. Right. Again, you don't know what may be there for you that Sunday. Mm. Whether the pastor is sick, out, accident, vacation, whatever it may be, God may, uh, may work something very special in your life mm. uh, on that Sunday. So it's important for us to show up. And yes, all of you have, have really touched on some really great stuff. We do have to uh, make sure that we are doing all the things that God has called us to do, except all of the training, except the teaching, except the word of God, except the program, except the vision of the pastor. Because if the vision of the pastor accepted, you're accepting his programs, then yes, he can not be there and everything flows right along smoothly. All right. Anybody else right there? When designated leaders are not available, how should lay people carry on? Anybody? All right. Wonderful discussion. So our second outline, which happens to be our last, we move over from Acts to 1 Corinthians, first chapter, verses 26 through 30. And what's happening in 1 Corinthians, first chapter, 26 through 30 it's the Corinthian church. So as you know from doing historical studies of the church of Corinth, they often get into disputes. They often have uh, trust issues with one another. It's a very mixed bag of, 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 of individuals. You have some folks who are of Jewish background who believe in uh, uh, Moses' law, the law of Moses, and then you have some people who are Gentiles, which basically means they don't believe uh, in God at all. Some of those Gentiles have accepted Jesus Christ. Some of the Jews have and have not. So there's a lot of squabbling going on. But Paul, who has established this church, wanted to remind them that it's all about serving Christ which leads you to serve others. And I like this. When I looked at this Sunday school lesson, I really thought about our youth department because one of their uh, programs that they do uh, is called Serving God by Serving Others. Is that the name of it? Yeah, something like that. Serving God by Serving Others. When they do the, the Thanksgiving uh, giving away and they do the Christmas giving away. So Paul wanted to remind this church at Corinth that wait a minute, y'all are squabbling about who's the leader and who's got more status. Let's just get back to serving one another. And I think that that is really, really beginning to get lost on a lot of churches. Churches are losing their way and they're not about serving others anymore. We got to kind of have that mentality that we had when we used to let our neighbors borrow milk. Now, I wish our neighbor would knock on the door for some milk. There's going to be some problems, right? We got to get back to that mentality of helping our brothers and sisters. And we got to get back to that mentality when the church herself was a hub for everything. You voted in the church. School was in the church. Town hall meetings were in the church. 
all of these things were in the church and she was so respected then yes. because all of those things filtered through the church. Mm -hmm. Folks, we still can impact areas, even though uh, most voting centers now are in other places, but we still can impact our community. And not only can we, we should be impacting the community because we are to serve the community. Yes. Look at this. Verse 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Paul is reminding them that God called the plain. He called the humble. He called the ordinary. But now you guys are turning it into only the people who are influential mm -hmm. can really operate things. Mm -hmm. And Paul is reminding them in verse seven, 27, but God, he says, but God had chosen the foolish things mm -hmm. of the world to confound the wise. In other words, God chose the simplest of things and the simplest of people to really show those who think they know everything how it really ought to operate. All right. Let me translate that for you. You can't know everything. All right. You can't know everything. Mm -hmm. We've got to pour a little bit out of our cup so that we can receive instruction mm -hmm. from the Lord. And the fact of the matter is, Paul is reminding them, just like I'm reminding you, that we were once that type of people. All right. Oh, Lord. But then we got a little edumacation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then we got a few mm -hmm. suits that got names in them. Because, right. you know, back in the day, they wouldn't let us go buy Ralph Lauren. All right. We thought we couldn't wear those type of suits. All right. And then we begin to lose our humility. Paul is trying to get them back to that place of service. Verse 28, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. Again, if you look at that verse, I want you to look at that in, in the, the NIV version of it. I got it on the screen now. The NIV version in that very verse 28 says this, God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. Hmm. God wants to use ordinary people right. to do extraordinary things. Hmm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that you cannot have a dime in your pocket, okay. but you still can conduct ministry okay. if you're willing. You cannot have any status in society but yet you can go to your church, go to your pastor, go to your officers and say, hey, what can I do to be a part of this ministry? In fact, I challenge you to challenge us. I challenge you to talk to your deacons, talk to your pastor and say, listen, we want to minister to our community. Folks, let's stop letting the liquor stores have all our communities. All right. You notice that it's a liquor store on every corner. All right. But guess what? Just as many liquor stores there are, there are churches right, right across the street from All the right. liquor store. All right. But we are not ministering or serving the community the way that the liquor right. store is. All right. 29. The reason why. God wants us to get back to being humble and a kingdom that serves. He says it right here in 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Hmm. What, what does that mean, Paul? That means that if we let the person with the high status do the same job as the person that don't even have anything to eat tonight mm. in the ministry. Nobody can brag that it's all about them. All right. And you know who gets the glory then? God. God, God gets the glory. Gets the glory. Yeah. 
Paul wanted to remind them. Now, the first part of this lesson, the, re, the, the, the reminder was showing us how to be hospitable, how to be generous. But now Paul wants to get our mind focused on service. Verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Paul wanted to remind them that the reason why you're even able to be before these people, the reason why you're evil, even able to minister, the reason why you are successful in your life, the reason why everybody looks to you is because of God. Mm -hmm. see. And Paul wanted to remind them not only do I not want you to forget that, but I don't want you to take advantage of it. All right. Yeah, God doesn't want us to take advantage of it just because he puts us in a position of authority. Mm -hmm. yes. Just because he puts us in a position that you're the go-to person, God does not want us to forget that what we do is all about serving others. That's right. Let that drive our decisions. Let that drive our ministries. Mm -hmm. Let that drive our lives serving for the righteousness of Christ. Right. And let me tell you something. The name of this church was the church at Corinth <laughs> 2,000 years ago. Folks, we have that same problem at New Mount Zion, mm -hmm. Old Mount Zion, mm -hmm. Morning Star, All right. Ain't It Grove, That's right. Greater Morning Star, mm -hmm. it's still applicable. Mm -hmm. We have to get back to realizing our purpose. The liquor store knows his purpose. That's right. To sell liquor to anybody who come in at 21 and older. All right. What's your purpose? Is your purpose just to open on Sundays? Is your purpose just to open on Wednesdays? Or have you forgotten that your purpose is to heal folks in your community? All right. The question is this, as Paul issues that reminder. When opportunities arise, do you glory in personal recognition or do all you can to promote Jesus Christ instead? I don't know if anybody's going to answer that one. <laughs> when opportunities arise, do you glory in personal recognition or do you do all you can do to promote Jesus Christ instead? That's real on that, on that one right there. That personal recognition is one thing that's got the churches in the condition that they're in right now. It's too many people yeah. want that personal recognition. The script, the scripture say, "Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works mm -hmm. and glorify the Father which is in heaven." They didn't say nothing about me doing the good work and receiving the glory. Mm -hmm. They said, "Me do let men see me doing good work." But the fire in heaven get the glory. Now we ain't doing that. We want to do the work, and we want the glory. That's so mm. right. That, that's that's just not the way it's supposed to. Do. When I go out here and do something in the Severino community, mm -hmm. then I should just go and do it and let and let that be it, and let yeah. God get the glory right. for what I have done. Mm -hmm. You know, but but we wanna we wanna do it and and use the old cliche. I did it. Uh -huh. I did mm -hmm. it, and, uh -huh. and that's that hurt the churches so bad. Mm -hmm. Is that nobody want to give God the recognition for mm -hmm. what He do? We all want that. We want that personal recognition for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Great comments. Uh, if you didn't hear it, Dick William talked about how uh, that's how a lot of the churches have gotten themselves uh, not in the greatest of shape and not having the best reputation among people is because uh, us wanting that personal glory instead of doing it for the glory of God. Make no mistake about it, guys. These trends and these surveys are for real. Uh, people think that we're nasty. <laughs> they think that we're not 
we're not in the business of ministering to the community anymore. Those are real surveys. We can ignore them all they want to. We want to, but that's what people think about us. Uh, they think that we are glory seeking. We think that we want personal recognition. Uh, and the, the surveys will tell you they think that we're not there to lift a finger to help outsiders or insiders. Hmm. Uh, so we have to really be serious about changing that thought process of what people think of us. And to dismiss that or to say whatever, they can think whatever, uh, that would be irresponsible. When opportunities arise, do you glory in personal recognition or do you do all you can to promote Jesus Christ instead? Anybody right there? Um, I would make a plane and put it like this and say that we've gotten to the point now where we do too much talking and not enough walking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> we talk about what it is that we do. We talk about this person and that person, uh, the new person that just came in with me so and so or today. Who sung this song? Who sat on this pew? But not realizing that the tongue is a powerful thing. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And that you can tear somebody down with your tongue, or yes, even just can. the way you look at them. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. So sometimes we have to take a step back and get off the the pedestal that we put ourselves on, mm -hmm. and look at somebody else's situation. And that's not what we're doing. All right. She sounds like a pastor's kid. Alexa said that um, we're doing, we've gotten to a place where we're doing a lot of talking and not a lot of walking, uh, which kind of aligns with what Paul is talking about here, that we're seeking that personal recognition. We can talk about it, but when it comes to action, when it comes to the action, all right, we've talked about it. We want to be a, a beacon in our community we want to bless those in our community we want to bless those inside of our community but when the action time comes that's when we start listing reasons why we shouldn't uh so we do a lot of talking and not a lot of walking great comment anybody else right there anybody else yes you know that's just about like a, a You know, it's about like on jobs and things, uh, and you get a big promotion or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, first thing you do is start bragging on yourself. Mm -hmm. but, but instead of bragging on yourself, we got to give God the glory because if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have a job in the first place. Uh -huh. And that's about like, um, I haven't seen this happen, um, teaching. Uh -huh. so, man, I taught a class. And you did a good job, then people start telling you how good a job you did and stuff, you know. And uh, you get the big hit. Uh -huh. But we can't do that. Right. Or we can't do nothing without the Lord. We can't do nothing without it. When people give, I mean, start bragging on you and stuff, you got to give it all to God because it's all because of God that you was able to do what you did. Because if it wasn't for God, you couldn't do nothing. Yeah. So we got to give God for everything mm -hmm. and not a brag and boast on ourselves. But we ain't got nothing to brag about when it comes to ourselves. Mm. When it comes to bragging, we uh, continually brag on God. So that's what it's all about. It's all about Him. That's it. That's it. It is all about Him. Wonderful comment. It's about God. We can't brag on ourselves. And we have to have the mindset, Deacon Smith, just to piggyback, that none of this is ours. The money's not ours. The building is not ours. The fame, the socioeconomic status, it all belongs to God. He's allowing us to be good stewards. And if we're not utilizing those things to serve others, then we're not being good stewards. We're being hoarders. Hmm. So we have to, when the opportunities arise, Make sure that we are giving God all the glory. Wonderful. You got something, Tanya? You might have to get a little closer so they can hear it. Pastor Brewer, and you know, we got to stop saying I, because if it wasn't for God, 
we can do what we what we doing. And we have to also understand everybody ain't made it to the same point or the same level that we're in. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand and meet people where you are and bring where they are and, and help them get to where you are. Mm -hmm. Stop eyeing and start yeah. walking. Yeah, yeah. We got to meet people where they are, if you didn't hear her, uh, and understand that not everybody is going to be the same level uh, as those mature believers. And again, you got to think about it. A lot of people who have this negative views of uh, church ministries, it may be because of how they were treated when they came in. They felt inadequate. Some of them were babes in Christ. Uh, some of them were just starting out in, in believing in God. So we have to make sure we take them where they are, as Tanya said. Wonderful, wonderful lesson. Uh, we have truly been blessed by highlighting these women uh, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as I've said before, I bless God for all the women in my life. Uh, I bless God for all the women uh, who have really done their parts in the body of Christ and they've been doing it for a long time and often they don't get highlighted for doing so. I want you to remember what the Apostle Paul taught us tonight. Uh, he taught us about being generous. He taught us about being hospitable. Uh, the opposite of generosity is selfishness. The op opposite of generosity is being a hoarder of your resources. That is not what God has called us to do. And then the Apostle Paul reminds us, just like he reminded this church at Corinth, let's go back to the basis. Let's go back to when we humbly served folks. Let's go back to when we fed folks who didn't have anything to eat. Let's go back to being the community people that we once were. And we were that. Back in the day when none of us had anything, we took care of one another. What changed? Our status, our bank accounts. Whatever changed, Paul reminds us to get back to what we once were in that regard. Nobody's trying to tell you to go back to a horse and carriage. We're not saying that. We're saying get back to the principles of serving our communities. A closing thought. This lesson unit dealt with the call of women in the work of Christ. In the lessons, we have studied how God used women for the manifestation, that's a word, of his glory and grace. This week's lesson taught about the power of our serving God, where we are even if the resources and number of people seem minimal. The women could not form a formal synagogue, so they gathered at the river. It was at the river that they made a focused decision to pray to and praise God. Their hospitable ways allowed for the ministry to flourish in that community and ultimately allowed for the spreading of the gospel. Let us go and do likewise. I encourage you to be hospitable, to be generous, and watch your ministry explode. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, God, we thank you for this wonderful lesson. We thank you, God, for all the great commenters, oh God. We thank you for all of those who listen in. We pray that you would bless each and every one of our ministries in a mighty special way. Father, as life goes on and we become more successful, our resources increase, our personal lives begin to look better than they've ever looked before. We oftentimes forget how far you brought us. So now, God, we want you to take our spirit and our mind back in a spiritual time machine a time in which we remember reaching out to the community, a time that we were neighborly, a time that we stuck together to get the job done. And Father, we want you to stir up those gifts that we know are permeating in our spirits. 
And Father, not only must we do that, O oh God, but we must be generous and hospitable with our resources, with our time, and with our efforts. Father, we rebuke the spirit of selfishness right now. Pray that you would look in all of our hearts, one by one. We want you to start from the top, the pastor, all the way down to the youngest child in the church and touch in a mighty special way. Create a heart to give. Father, we pray that the rest of this week would be a blessed week. We pray, oh God, that you would put your arms around the Thurman family in their time of need. Thank you for that time you allowed us to be with Geraldine and for her to be with us. And we know, oh God, to be absent in this body is to be present with you. We pray for all of those who've lost loved ones, especially, God, in the midst of this global pandemic, God. We want to say that we love you. We bless you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. All right, uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves and say good evening. And don't forget, on this Sunday, we will be meeting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. All right. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night.